Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new episode of the Amazing Tennis Podcast with Emma. Um, we're really happy to have our guest today, uh, Paola Graziani. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. She is a personal trainer, so she uh, basically works out with people and teaches them what to do in the gym, uh, routines and stuff in France. And she is uh, kind of visiting and work with doing content with Emma. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you guys met through Instagram, right? Right. So like, yeah, you guys contacted through Instagram. She came, she's here for a couple of weeks, and then they've been doing some content uh, in the tennis court and then on the gym as well. So, uh, Paula, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get started with that. Okay, so I'm a personal trainer in France, in Corsica, so with a little island on the France. Um, I mostly train women because my speciality is women's body transformation. So I do it mostly in the gym. That's what I enjoy. I enjoy bringing people from, from one part to another part, um, really transforming the body through nutrition, uh, good workouts, um, everything that surrounds it with woman body is a little bit different because there are of course hormones uh you know menopause uh, being pregnant it's some cycle of the woman's life that are very different to men and also i think when you're a woman you can train women better because it's a different feeling than when you're a man right. yeah. so yeah that's what i do Awesome. And then, uh, well, I didn't have this written down, but like, because these things, I, I don't know, I guess Emma already talked a little bit more uh, with you, but where did you get like, uh, where did you start like learning about like how to work out and like all the, did you go to any school? Um, uh, yeah, so I I was in a very bad place when I did my study. I, I studied international business. I was really unhealthy. I was going out a lot and I didn't work out at all. I was all day on couch. And then one day I was like, okay, I'm done with this. And I started working out for myself and like eating right food and everything. And like the feeling was so good that it kept growing. And then I it got I got really fascinated about it. So I did um uh, certificate at the National Academy of Sports Medicine in America uh, in fitness woman transformation exactly so yeah everything about nutrition and and training uh, if like weightlifting um, speed agility quickness uh, flexibility training uh, well everything Mm -hmm. And then I also did with Cairo Performances. I don't know if you do it, you know this, but Cairo Performances. That's an Australian coach. It's, it's a really good one. And I did a certificate with him uh, also, but that is really like gym focused and weightlifting. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, okay. So I have a couple of questions prepared for each of you, uh, kind of on your related field. Uh, and I think this is a good way for people to like know you guys without just asking like direct questions about like, uh, like where, like how did you start or something or something, but just uh, questions about tennis and then about more like the fitness side of things. Um, we'll start with you, Emma. And the first one is, um, this one came up recently, like this is actually a question that I have, and I personally want to know like your opinion, um, but I think it would help a lot of people. So we're close to a tournament with the FAU team. Uh, and I was wondering with so many thoughts that you can have as a tennis player, to play better, right? So like positive mindset or like even technical things like hitting a uh, ball earlier or whatever. So many things that you can do to improve your game. How do you choose the thoughts that uh, that you want to use in the match to keep it simple and not overwhelm yourself? So you, you're you thinking about the thoughts just to use in the tournament. So like a week before the tournament? I mean, during the match. So like, during. so I know that all the things that I want to uh, work on, right? But yeah. there are a lot. And then going into the actual match and the actual playing things that I want to like, keep in my mind to play better. How do you choose or narrow down uh, the things or how many things you want to like ideally so you're not overwhelmed of thoughts when you're playing? Well, I don't think there's an ideal thing, but I can tell you from my experience what worked for me. And I actually was cleaning out my uh, my office the other day at home because it's a mess. Um, and I just wanted to organize some things and I found this old notebook that I used to have in my tennis bag. And I had, I think, up to 10 things that would really help me. So like on the changeover, I would just open that and just remind myself of those few things, what I needed at the moment in my game, right? So it was like something like focus on one point at a time, basic, I know. Um, toss higher on the serve because that's what I was working on, like just to 
because when your mind starts like wandering off on the edge, if like things are going down and it's not going well, you start getting frustrated, you're like, oh, I don't want to lose. Or like for me, it was I was always focused a lot on the outcome. Mm -hmm. I would always be worried what people are going to think if I lose up. I don't want to lose, you know, like, so once these thoughts start creeping in, I try to, like, focus on, move your feet, yeah. right, like, move your feet, so I would, like, before the return, I would just, like, bounce right. around a lot, yeah. a lot more than usual, so it was, like, move your feet, thoughts higher on the serve, um, uh, oh, follow through on your back end, you know, like, simple things for me, like I said, I don't think there's ideal things, but like, let's say whatever you're working on in your but, life right mm -hmm. now, just little reminders because you don't get coaching, yeah. right? So the coach can remind you, hey, like, you know, the toss. You know, maybe you will remember it, but to me, holding that book and that's not cheating, that's right. not against yeah. the rules, holding a little notebook always helped me so much and i would write them down for myself i would not ask the coach or anybody i would just write them down for myself this is it right yeah, yeah. well that's great so yeah it's like almost keeping it simple and what you're working on the moment yes and then uh it's it's really up to the person uh what works and like what you really need to work on really very for each person exactly right? what you're working on right now and they have to be short right to do want to yeah. like Three not sentences yeah. where I'm sitting and reading because I still want to rest. And you already know all that, all that stuff, right? It's just yes, like a I mind of yeah. yeah, like instead of thinking about something negative or like looking in the crowd or somebody and looking for help or I don't know. We're good. Keep yeah. Work. No, yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So we're gonna mix the questions with some like light stuff. They're not about tennis or workouts at all, like zero. They're literally like random stuff. Uh, some of them I came, no, most of them I came on. That's why I stayed up to create and doing them. So they're super light, and then we're gonna go back to your normal, your serious question. Okay. okay. okay we're gonna go. ask. I'm gonna do half of them now. <laughs> no, never. Yeah, half of them now, half of them later. You're both gonna answer them. Okay. We're gonna start with Paula. I'm gonna ask half of them, and then Emma's gonna answer the same questions. Do you have your own Netflix account, or do you use somebody else's? My own. <laughs> if you could, okay, this is going. If you could punch one person in the whole world. Who would you punch? <laughs> right. Doesn't anybody like anyone? It could be a famous, it could be a, a friend, whatever. Who else? Like, no, really, really no. I don't hate anyone. Like, who I, don't, I don't hate either. But sometimes you want to punch people. <laughs> so, like someone, you know what I mean? What happens? No okay. idea. Okay, follows peaceful. Yeah. Uh, nickname. Nickname. Wow. Oh. Oh, okay. Cool. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Good choice. Favorite kind of food. Savory for sure. <laughs> savory, like yeah. sushi. Sushi. But what's savory? Like sweet and savory. I'm, like, I'm still lost. But... Like the desserts. <laughs> what? So sweet, sweet are like. Oh, you think savory, salty, salty, like like oh. meals. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I actually got no clue. You've never. I've heard it, but I didn't know idea what it means. So everything that's not sweet is savory food? Yeah, I prefer yeah. savory. But like, if she you want one food, sushi, for sure. Okay, yeah. great. What's your what was your first job? I was working in a candy shop. Nice, interesting. Thank you. <laughs> She's still, sorry. Uh, that's such a big change. That's <laughs> what? They went from like three seconds. Candy shop to the... To yeah. every yeah. That's cool. Um, all right, well, and then what was your last vacation you did? This, not counting this one. Rome. Cool. Yeah. Anyway. All right, we'll do the rest after. All right, Emma, Netflix again? Do you have your own or you use someone else? I use someone else. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, my brother in laws. Okay. Was really <laughs> <laughs> Someone told well, my husband's brother. Oh, I see. his. Okay. Yeah. Oh, poor guy. Uh, I don't even you, watch who Netflix. Who are you? Who are you punch? Anyone? You. <laughs> when I wrote this, I was like, this, anyway. this girl is coming. But I was like, maybe she's changed. You know what I mean? Nope. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, nickname. No, this is like forever. Do I have? I used to have. I told you. Who is Mika? 
Mita? No, eh, Emita. Emita. It's funny. Oh, my mom. Mom. Uh-oh. Emara. Emara? Emara. Yeah, I don't know. All right, cats or dogs? Dogs. Uh, favorite kind of food? Pizza. I was already prepared because I heard the questions. Oh, yeah, of course. Slurpy, why? Uh, first job? Well, I guess. Oh, yeah, you, you told me there's not, there's not tennis. Was your... No, but that's not my first job. Oh. Well, I worked for my parents in a grocery store. Oh, huh, interesting. Then, on uh, your last vacation? I know this, so I know what she's talking about. Oh, oh no. Bahamas, cruise. Bahamas. Um, yeah, you're right. I went on a cruise. Okay. All right. Uh, we're back to Paula. All right. This is back to the series though. It's a big shift. But so can you talk a little bit about how to find consistency in the gym? I mean, there's such a big like it's so like the hardest thing to like people. Everybody has gone to the gym, yeah. But very few people really go every day and keep it going for so long. So yeah. what are your keys to find that consistency? That's a good question, especially now in January, because everyone's like going <laughs> now. <laughs> no, it's so true. <laughs> like the gym are like so crowded now, and it only lasts like a month. Like, mm -hmm. what are those people doing? That like, they lose consistency, and that is something I see a lot. Is that people they do it like all or nothing. Like they can't find right. a balance, you know. And you gotta find something that works for you, and don't copy like Instagram people you see going to the gym six times a week, eating healthy twenty four seven. Like that's not balance. You have to find something that that works for you. Like either going to the gym two times a week, and then I don't know, go for a walk, do Pilates, and don't like think like, oh, I messed up this week, so let's mess up like next week too it's too late you know or like mess up one meal and then I'm like, okay my day is done now I'm done one bad uh, diet so I should stop everything no you have to like focus on the big uh, story and not just the the moment right now you know what I mean so have a goal and make up little um yeah, make little, how do you, how can you say that? Just like short term, small goals. Yeah, yeah. and then take these off. And if you don't do it one day, well, it's fine. Like you have the next day to, to start it again, but don't stop everything because you messed up one day. You have to do it. Yeah, you have to enjoy yourself. Yeah, I think that that's really what a lot of people struggle with, sorry, I'm just like, um, because, you know, you think, like I'm training for half marathon right now, I told you, right? So it's like, oh, if I miss one day, like I'm gonna do what's in the schedule, yeah. or I'm gonna like completely yeah. like stop or I'm gonna, no, like it doesn't matter. Like yeah. you gotta listen to your body if you're tired That's today. Right. And even in this training, it says, it's okay if you skip a day or something, if your body is exhausted yeah. or like, it's fine, yeah. you'll be back tomorrow or the yeah. next day. You know, not like giving up. That is such a very important listening to your body. It's something I've done. I haven't done myself when I started because I'm like someone who gives everything or I don't do it at all. But then when I do everything, it's like seven training seven days a week and then doing my nutrition perfect and everything. And I don't listen to my body. And that's where the mistake was. And that's where my body, like it wasn't working as I wanted because I wasn't listening to it and normally your body knows better than your mind or people around you yeah you can really feel when you're ready to give a good training or you have to have some rest and there's something very important to in the long run right right so yeah that's that's a great answer actually because it's like I feel like all, all we've all experienced that like finding a balance yeah because it's so like so so much like either everything or nothing so like you make a mistake and like no, I'm done. No, I can't do this. And yeah, uh, that's great. Okay. Uh, all right. So that was yeah, great answer. And um, okay. So back to the fun questions. So now I start. Yes. Now you start. We got only four left, and then some. But that no, that's it. Okay. Uh, favorite dessert. They're called rapid fire questions, actually. So <laughs> you get fired rapidly while we've been I mean Chocolate, anything with chocolate. Me too. Chocolate. Great. Great. Favorite store? Like, sorry, I know they're rapid. So rapid, it's insane. But like clothing store or any, grocery store? Anything. Any store. Any store. Any store. DJ Max. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I love that it took five minutes to say DJ Max. Okay, great. 
Uh, biggest fear. The, of failure. Okay, deep. But <laughs> not exactly what I was looking for, but I was like snakes or something like that. Just like just fear of failing in life. Okay. Okay, like now it's gone. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Leave it, leave it. Favorite movie. Oh, notebook. I've I've had that. Yeah. This game is you know, we're good. Like moves on the way. Okay. Is your oh this is good. Is your bed man, made right now? No. No? Okay. All right. <laughs> cool to know. Um where do we okay, favorite dessert? Chocolate. Oh yeah, you said. Yeah. Uh, favorite store? Anything online, like active clothing. Okay. Is that stupid? I mean, no, you can that's what that works. Uh biggest fear. Uh losing someone I love. Oh my god, what's going on this <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. I know it's fine, it's fine. It's completely valid. It was just not what I would expect. You know what I mean? Um, what would it take? Like, I was, I was thinking really physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, well, like, well, the thing is, I do actually have a fear, but I didn't know if you were going deep or like, you're not. Oh, well, that's why it is. My, my, like, my, my fear, like, the fear, like, if I'm scared of something. It's like being in the dark. I always feel like I'm falling. Oh, okay. No, but I, it's fine. Like it's a, it's an open question. I was okay, just, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm a little bit mature, and I was thinking about like not sure. in oh, yes. I was just thinking about like like insects. You know, I was like, this is gonna be so funny. And I said like like it's scary about it. like just losing from my life. <laughs> All right, is your is your bed made right now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm in a rush every morning, and well, yeah. no, I had this thing where I started, and for seven days I lasted to build a new habit of making the bed every day because it only takes one day. Yeah, sixty-six days. Well, just I thought it was thirty. I thought it was ninety. What? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Nah. Yeah. Well, and I did lasted for seven days, and I was like, I'm just stressed, too stressed every morning with two yeah. kids. It's tough. I, I go, I come and go. Like I feel one day that I wake up a little bit early and you're like, oh my God, like let's do this. <laughs> like we finish it and you're like, it feels so good. Uh, what is one thing that you think uh, tennis as a sport needs in order to grow more? I would think make it more affordable for everyone in the world to play tennis. Right. I, I, I 100% agree. I, I mean, coming from golf, it's such an expensive sport yeah. and it's like so limited to like such a small group of people and there's so much talent that never nobody ever sees. No, yeah. uh, same. It's like outside. I mean, we we see now this side because you know I'm coaching people that do have money and that can afford it, but I'm coming from a country, a really small country that kids that are actually really and not just kids. It doesn't matter like that you're going to succeed. I'm not talking, right, I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about we're talking about making it fun, right? Like making more um clinic something more you know that's more accessible exactly yeah. um awesome would you rather have to work out with jeans and a winter jacket for the rest of your life or have to work out with a blister on each hand for the rest of your life what is a blister a blister like uh you know those like when you, you get blisters. Blisters and you get like a blister and it pops and it's like your skin is oh no, it's a blister blister in each hand one in each hand yeah does she know what a blister is yes um, I'm not going to work on a jean and it's sweater. <laughs> Can I ask her that? Jeans and a sweater. Are you saying a jean? Like it's all picky and. Yes, but the blisters. Kind of but yeah, the blisters blister get bad. Like those, those are like just like. Okay. I, I, guess you I think I would do like a band aid on. No, no, no. Would you rather have to coach in high heels forever? Every lesson you have to give in like high heels, in clay, hard courts, anything. Or be followed by 10 rats anywhere you go. Anywhere you go. They're not... okay. No, but it's like, I, feel... I, I wanted to do like two, two tennis games, but I was like, I can't think of anything. And I was like, all right, I'll do the rat. But wait, you don't know the whole thing. The rats are not going to hurt you or like touch you. They're literally just walking around and just following you. You gotta kind of move like It's bad, it's bad, but it's like high heels every single lesson until the day you die. You get used to it. 
No, you don't. Yes, and you build more muscles, like calf muscles. That's a, that's a great point. That's a good one. That's a good I point. I cut down on my okay. hours of teaching. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, you can't cut down on the racks. Yeah, so no, that's... Yeah, no, like, like, imagine I'm like going on a date. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, I think I... And that's probably the right answer. It's probably the right answer. Would you rather like you have to drink only either soup or milk every time you work out? You can't have water. Like is it have to be like a glass of milk or soup? Soup. Hot soup as well. Yeah. Or oh, wait, you don't know. No, no, wait. Oh wait, that's <laughs> no, wait, I'm, I'm, that was not the whole question. Or never use toothpaste again for the rest of your life. Never have what? Use toothpaste. <laughs> you can only brush like with water. Forever. Die. Having soup. The soup and then yeah. you can have after you finish working, but like if you're working out, soup is the only liquid you can have. I think soup. <laughs> no, you can. Yeah, I think I got right answer for sure. Um, so you're not gonna die. You know I mean, it's just gonna be disgusting. Yeah, definitely. Like milk. Milk. Right? Milk. 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 Yeah, milk's not too bad. Milk. Milk. Healthy. You don't like milk. I love it. I really love milk. I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. Yes. Yeah. Like now that my kids are drinking, like in the morning, they like their milk. Like sometimes, honestly, instead of like coffee or some, like I would have my glass of milk. Would you rather have to pay ten dollars every time you miss a ball, uh, like you, even in lessons? So every time you don't make a ball in the court, you have to pay ten bucks, or get a you know a mushroom in her Oh my god! You know what that is? Oh my god! Uh, twice a year. Oh my, oh my goodness! Pay ten dollars because I don't miss. Oh. <laughs> it's so humble. Oh. But like, seriously, so walk around with a mushroom. Can I? Agree? I agree. Yeah, but then how much is more expensive just to pay for the balls? <laughs> exactly. Then how long it takes for it to grow out? Yeah. But I think it's just mushroom. But I'm, what? I'm, but he's a boy. And that carrot too important for it. No, no, no mushroom. Mushroom. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Last question for Paula. Can you explain the? Difference and importance between discipline versus mo mo uh, motivation. So <clears throat> motivation is something that goes and comes. Like you're not, go I'm not going to the gym every day. Like oh my god, I get to work. No, like that happens. Like maybe like what two two days a week or three, and then I'm like oh my god, I really don't want to go. But I think of the big goal, and I just get myself there, and I'm like I know I feel better after it. I know. It's going to make me feel good. I'm going to be more awake for the next, uh, like the rest of the day. I know it, it will bring me closer to my goal. And yeah, you just do it for the longer run, like for the big goal, but not for how you feel in that moment. Because if I listen to myself every time I go to the gym, then I wouldn't go as much. And if I just don't go to the gym because, I don't know, because my plate is at three and so I won't have time. No, you just make you make time for the things that are important to you and that bring you closer to the goal. So to me, motivation is like a feeling that is here sometimes and it just goes away. And discipline is, it's, it's more profound than, profound, say that in English, yeah. than that it's like, it's, it's automatic. Like you don't think about it. It's very ro robotic. Like, yeah, you, you go, for the big goal, like I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, well, that's a great answer. Okay, we're going to close out um, this podcast with one question for Vise because he's been coming up with all the questions, and I just came up with a fabulous question for him. Which sport is harder, golf or tennis? Golf, a hundred percent. No, 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 not even joking. Like, not even joking. I swear, I love it. right now. I'm, I'm playing a lot more tennis, and you know how much I love it. Not even close. And this is. For everyone watching or listening that played golf or tennis or that has ever said that tennis, I really, I can actually more into tennis now than I got golf. I golf probably once every month now. I try to do, I'm, I'm trying to do it more, but I really like tennis. I absolutely, I'm in love with it. Not even close how hard this sport is. Like, not even close. I know. Can you explain? Why? Yes, tennis is a moving sport. The ball is moving. It's faster. The other opponent can be better than everything. Tennis is a sport that people get better. I think really unathletic people get better a lot quicker. A lot, like it's a lot more simple. The movements are a lot more simple. Golf, it involves the mental side that the ball's still, so it's so hard mentally. So many moving parts, uh, and it's such a small. Like it's it, it involves a course, but it's like tennis. You play on the same course every single time. 
same size, everything is the same. Yeah, sometimes it's placed on the target. Okay, golf, every single golf course in the world, every single hole of the 18 holes I report is completely different. Water, sand, uh, conditions, wind, like everything is so different and everything. This happens even harder. Like golf oh is God. 25 times harder. I'm not even joking. <laughs> no? Okay, have you played golf? Yeah. Okay. Wow, tennis is so much harder than golf. It's faster. It's like not you have to be more yeah. athletic. Like you don't have to be fit to play golf. No, you're just standing. Like, that's a that's a different story. Like in terms of like athleticism, yeah, you do need more athleticism on, on tennis. Tennis but is overall, mental. not every every court is different. You go anywhere, US Open, Wimbledon, Australia Open, Roland Garros, indoor, outdoor. Yes, the point is that the 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 court the course where you're playing it, that the court, the stage where you're playing it is the same size every single time. The, like it's it doesn't change. But ball, I think every single ball is the same. Okay, so the ball doesn't move, so you get used to hit the ball in a certain way, and you know it's gonna move this way or this way or that way, even if there's wind or not. The ball, it doesn't come like the same. I understand. Way I understand. All the and time. I, I'm not saying tennis is easy. There's so it's so hard to play. But it's like if you compare the two, I'm telling you, and you don't really understand this unless you yeah. actually go on a course and play, and you see like if you take if you run out, you try to go on a play, you're not finishing the first hole. Like you'll be stuck there. If there's like an actual hole with water, you're not finishing. And it's 18. The golf tennis is for that, even like no matter how bad you are, you can step out on the court and play with someone, or at least try, right? Um, golf, if you don't know how to play, like you're just not, you cannot go out on the course. Like it's literally impossible. You will never finish. Never, never. Because um, the courses are so long, right? I mean, why I asked you this is because you're a great, you played golf most of your life. So that's why I'm asking. And now you're playing tennis a lot. So it's like, you know, yeah. you. I can ask you. I I think obviously tennis because I'm a tennis player, right. right? Okay. Anyways, this was very good. Um, thank you so much for coming up with these questions at uh, two or three a.m. this morning. Yeah. Thank you, Tamara, for helping me so much. Oh, yeah. so sweet. Yeah. So this is why the question questions were so good today. <laughs> now it don't make sense. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, Paula, for being thank here. You. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe to. Paula's Instagram yeah. channel. Body by Pao. Body Body by Pao. Body by P A O. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. My nickname. Yes. Jose's okay. um, Instagram. <laughs> Mine is like a personal Instagram, but please follow me. J M Camacho, C A M A C H O, and then Z as in Zebra. Mine is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> at Tennis with Emma 1M and thanks for uh, watching and we'll see you next time awesome. thank you for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please share it with others post about it on social media or leave a rating and a review to catch all the latest from me you can follow me on Instagram YouTube, Facebook and TikTok at Tennis with Emma thanks again and I'll see you next time